How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to be talking about some recent things that have already developed in the Reina v. Becerra case. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump this video, if you think that California's handgun roster violates the Second Amendment and should be abolished, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a shout out to some of the main sponsors of the channel, first being Thorson Custom. Thorson provides so much more than just California compliant features for rifles and other firearms. They also advocate for Second Amendment cases which ultimately are targeted at abolishing those laws which actually make their parts relevant in the state of California. So like I mentioned, Thorson Customs is an amazing company. I cannot thank them enough for supporting this channel. And if you'd be interested, I'll go ahead and put a link to them down in the detail section. I also want to thank Gotcha 6 For just $2.99 a month, you get access to a lot of amazing things on their app. This includes up-to-date local, state, and national legislative information, and they have neat features on their app like the Initiate Freedom button. So if your Second Amendment rights are ever violated through something like a red flag law, you can click this button and a notification goes out to members of your group. So if you're interested in taking a look at Got Your Six, I'll put a link down below to them as well. So before I jump into this video, I want to thank all of you guys for all the amazing support that you've shown me on the last video I put out, notifying you all that I will be leaving the private practice that I've been doing um, as of recently for over the last few years. And now I'm going to be moving over and actually doing Second Amendment law with Firearms Policy Coalition. And since I put out that last video, you guys showed me a lot of support, a lot of kindness, um, a lot of well wishes on that last video. So I just want to thank you guys. And like I mentioned in that video, all this was not possible without you guys. So let's jump into this update on Reina v. Becerra. If you're not familiar with my last video, you can click this tab right here and it'll take you to that video. But essentially what Reina v. Becerra is, is a challenge filed by multiple uh, plaintiffs, including Firearms Policy Coalition, against the state of California for their handgun roster, the list of handguns that are deemed safe in the state of California. It is seeking to overturn that, find that piece of legislation unconstitutional in violation of the Second Amendment, and it also targets various aspects in the state of California that prohibit individuals from self-manufacturing handguns as well because it, they violate off-roster handgun rules, laws, stuff like that. So it's a very comprehensive case. And one thing that has developed since the filing of this case by the various plaintiffs is this notice of related cases. If you look at the link from Firearms Policy Coalition related to this case, and I'll put a link down to that as well if you want to take a look at all these filings for yourself, they filed what is known as a notice of related cases. And so what is a notice of related cases? A lot of people were asking me about this specific filing and what impact this has. And really short and simple, what this has to deal with is Judge Benitez. This all revolves around Judge Benitez. Plaintiffs in this case want it in the Southern District. They are saying that Reina v. Becerra is similar to other cases like Duncan, like Miller, like Fotis, and therefore Judge Benitez should hear this case as well. We saw something similar to this develop with Miller v. Becerra when Duncan v. Becerra was heard by Judge Benitez. We also saw Miller get um, heard before Judge Benitez also and is going to be heard before Judge Benitez because it deals with a similar issue. So the plaintiffs here are in the Southern District of California and they want this heard before Judge Benitez and that's what this is all about. And it's revolving around Local Rule 40.1F is what I believe, it's Subdivision F. And so when you take a look at that subdivision and I'll read it to you guys real quick, it's called Notice of Related Cases Duties of Counsel. It says that whenever counsel has reason to believe that a pending action or proceeding on file or about to be filed is related to another pending action or proceeding on file in this or any other federal or state court, whether pending, dismissed, or otherwise terminated, counsel must promptly file and serve on all known parties to each related action or proceeding a notice of related case stating the title, number, and filing date of each action or proceeding believed to be related, together with a brief statement of the relationship and the reasons why assignment to a single district judge is or is not likely to affect a saving of judicial effort and other economics. So I'm not going to read the rest of this because it's that last sentence that you probably heard that is most important for here. What's happening is under this local rule, it is the obligation of the plaintiffs to state whether or not this specific case, Randy Becerra, is similar and deals with things already being heard before another pending case before another judge in the same district. And here plaintiffs has said that Reina v. Becerra should also be heard by Judge Benitez because he is also dealing with a similar case in Miller v. Becerra, which is before him and is due for a hearing January and of this upcoming year. A lot of you are probably familiar that Judge Benitez has given very favorable rulings recently in Duncan, Rody, potentially in Miller, and so the hope would be that if you get this before Judge Benitez, a very similar case, this being uh, Reina Bibicera deals with very similar things. If it goes before the same judge, the hope is strategically, at least maybe you know, 
he might lean one way or another. Now, that's not a foregone conclusion. Of course, the judge has to look at the case itself, determine what he um, thinks about it. He's going to have to look at all the evidence put forward. Now, what happened since then, of course, is the attorney general's office does not want that to happen. And so what the AG's office did and what the state of California did is they um, filed an objection to this. And so I'm not gonna read it to you guys because you can guess what the AG's office said here. They said that Reina Becerra does not deal with anything similar to Miller, Duncan, or any of these other cases that are pending before Judge Benitez or that Judge Benitez has dealt with. And therefore Reina should not also be before him. In the eyes of the AG's office, they don't believe that this deals with similar matters, although it does deal with similar parties. Um, in their view, they think that it does not. Of course, I agree with the plaintiffs. Um, I agree with Firearms Policy Coalition and all the other plaintiffs that this does deal with similar things that we saw addressed by Judge Benitez, not only in Duncan, but also pending before him in Miller v. Becerra. And therefore, it should be assigned to him as well. But of course, the AG's office in the state of California is afraid of Judge Benitez because they know he is not going to buy their very weak arguments relating to why they instituted the handgun roster, the public safety concerns related to the handgun roster. They know that he's not going to buy all the nonsense that essentially the state of California is selling. So early on in this case, Reina Lucera, we are having a pretty big battle and it has to do with whether or not this will go to Judge Benitez because it is similar to other cases like Miller, like Duncan, if it deals with similar things, deals with similar parties, or whether or not it will go to some other judge in the Southern District. My hope, and I'm sure a lot of your guys' hope, is that this will also go to St. Benitez, that he will get to actually hear this case as well. He's very knowledgeable on these types of issues. He addresses these issues with a lot of knowledge and understanding about what actually some of the firearms we're dealing with, along with some of the Second Amendment implications and some of the constitutional implications. So this is something we'll definitely be keeping an eye on as this develops. And of course, if this gets assigned to Judge Benitez, I will definitely let you guys know because that will bode well for us hopefully going forward in this case. Once again, I just want to thank you guys for all the support that you showed me on the last video and support you're showing me going forward as I make this transition to working for Firearms Policy Coalition, getting to deal with these uh, cases specifically, like Reina v. Becerra and maybe even Miller v. Becerra and a lot of these other Second Amendment cases that are going on nationwide that Firearms Policy Coalition is filing. I'm really excited for this opportunity and I'm excited for what it's going to bring for this channel and a lot of the amazing opportunities it's going to bring to this channel and a lot of the amazing information and additional information it's going to be able to bring to this channel so that you guys can even get more of an understanding about what's going on and get to peek even more behind the scenes about these cases and what's going on. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and you like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell because that helps the channel analytics helps us spread the word about the Second Amendment and also helps spread the word about things like this that are going on in the state of California. So as always, thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.